Hi, welcome to my chest x-ray series. For now, we are going to talk only about normal anatomy visible on chest x-rays. Each of these anatomical structures should be viewed using a systematic approach. This is a normal chest x-ray. Pause for a second and see how many anatomical structures can you name. Welcome back. These are the visible structures in a normal chest x-ray. Esophagus, pleura and fissures are invisible in a normal chest x-ray but they become visible when there is some abnormality. Now let's discuss these structures one by one. The large airways such as trachea and major bronchi contain air and are therefore less dense, means blacker than surrounding tissue. The trachea should be central or slightly to the right at the level of the aortic knuckle. The trachea branches at the level of crina into the left and right main bronchi. If the trachea is deviated, it is important to recognize if this is due to patient's rotation or if it is due to an actual pathology. If the trachea is genuinely deviated, you should then try to decide if it has been pushed or pulled by a disease process. For example, here in this x-ray, the trachea along with mediastinum is deviated to the right due to left-sided massive pleural effusion. Now, let's discuss normal hilar structures. The lung roots, or hyla, singular hilum, are complicated anatomical structures containing the pulmonary vessels and the major bronchi, arranged asymmetrically. Each hilar point is the angle formed where the upper and lower lobe pulmonary vessels meet. They are useful points of reference to determine the position of the hyla. Commonly, the left hilum is higher than the right hilum. Both hyla should be of similar size and density. If either hilum is bigger and more dense, meaning whiter than normal, this may indicate an abnormality. The hilar lymph nodes are not visible on a normal chest x-ray. They are of particular importance clinically. Often, hilar enlargement is due to enlargement of these nodes. As can be seen here, there is symmetric bilateral hilar lymphadenopathy due to sarcoidosis. The oxygenated blood indicated by blue arrows is pumped upwards out of the right ventricle via the main pulmonary artery. The main pulmonary artery divides into left pulmonary artery and right pulmonary artery, which pass into the lungs via the hyla. As you can see in this x-ray, the pulmonary vessels in the lower lobe are more prominent and have more diameter than those in the upper lobes. If reverse happens, that is, if the upper lobe pulmonary vessels have the same or higher diameter than the lower lobe pulmonary vessels, we call it cephalization of pulmonary veins or batwing appearance. This is classically seen in early pulmonary edema. Let's move on to mediastinal contours. The heart is located in the middle mediastinum. Other visible structures of the mediastinum should also be checked when viewing a chest x-ray. These include the aortic knuckle, descending aorta, aortopulmonary window, and right paratracheal stripe. Let's review them one by one. The cardiothoracic ratio is used to determine the size of heart on chest x-ray and is frequently expressed as a percentage. A ratio of greater than 1 ratio 2 or greater than 50% is considered abnormal, and it roughly means there is cardiomegaly or pericardial effusion. In this chest x-ray, the cardiothoracic ratio is approximately 15 ratio 33 centimeter, and is therefore within the normal limit of 50%. The left heart contour shown by red line consists of the left lateral border of the left ventricle. The right heart contour shown by blue line is the right lateral border of the right atrium. The lingula is part of the upper lobe of the left lung. It wraps over the left ventricle. Loss of definition of the left heart border may be related to lung disease involving the lingula, such as a lobar pneumonia of lingula. The right middle lobe is located adjacent to the right atrium. Loss of definition of the right heart border may be due to increased density caused by disease in this lobe, such as a right middle lobe pneumonia. The aortic knuckle represents the left lateral edge of the aorta as it arches backwards over the left main bronchus. The contour of the descending thoracic aorta can be seen in continuation from the aortic knuckle. Displacement or loss of definition of these contours can indicate diseases such as aortic aneurysm or adjacent lung consolidation. The aortopulmonary window is located between the aortic knuckle and the left pulmonary artery. It is a space where abnormal enlargement of mediastinal lymph nodes can be seen on a chest x-ray from the level of the clavicles 
to the azygos vein, the right edge of the trachea is seen as a thin white line or stripe. This stripe is created by air of low density, that blacker lung lying either side of the comparatively dense, that is whiter, tracheal wall. Normally, right paratracheal stripe is less than 3 mm thick. Thickening of the paratracheal stripe more than 3 mm may represent pathology such as a paratracheal mass or enlarged lymph nodes. This x-ray shows a superior mediastinal mass abutting right paratracheal stripe and aortic knuckle. Biopsy was done and it was confirmed as a case of lymphoma. Now, let's discuss lung zones. For the purpose of description, the lungs are divided into upper, middle and lower zones. Each of these zones occupies approximately one third of the height of the lungs. Note that the lung zones are not equal to lung lobes. For example, the lower zone on the right comprises both the middle and lower lobes. Also, note that the lower zones reach below the diaphragm shown by dotted white line because the lungs pass behind the dome of the diaphragm into the posterior sulcus of each hemithorax. When assessing lung zones, compare each zone with the opposite side. If the lungs appear asymmetrical, it should be determined if this is due to asymmetry of normal structures, technical factors, such as rotation or lung pathology. If there is genuine asymmetry, Decide which side is abnormal. Often a dense or whiter area is abnormal, such as in pneumonia or lung cancer, but some diseases cause reduced density, that is blackening, as in pneumothorax. If there is an area that is different from the surrounding areas of the same lung, then this is likely to be the abnormal area. Now, let's move on to pleura and pleural spaces, which are only clearly visible when abnormal. Pleural abnormalities can be subtle, so it is important to check carefully around the edge of each lung where abnormalities are seen more easily. Make sure you can see lung markings all the way to the edge of the chest wall. If the lung edge, that is visceral pleura, is visible and there is black surrounding this edge, then a pneumothorax should be suspected. This should lead to immediate assessment of the patient's trachea and mediastinum, both on the x-ray and, more importantly, clinically. Deviation of midline structures away from the side of a pneumothorax is evidence of attention pneumothorax, which is a medical emergency. Let's move on to lung lobes and fissures. This is a normal chest x-ray. Recall that right lung has three lobes divided by two fissures. You can see here we have got horizontal fissure and oblique fissure drawn in. This is right upper lobe, which is pretty simple to recognize. We can see right middle lobe in green, hugging the right heart border right lower lobe, just the anterior portion of it, I must emphasize, hugging the hemidiaphragm on both sides. On the other hand, there is only one fissure on the left side, and so two lobes. This portion here, hugging the left heart border, is lingular portion, which is part of left upper lobe, corresponding to right middle lobe. You can notice that I haven't drawn anything going up above the level of the clavicles. That's because the anterior chest really stops at the clavicles. The apical regions of lung are really posteriorly within the chest. So if we look posteriorly now, I've emphasized the fact that the posterior costophrenic recesses go down below the level of the hemidiaphragm on your frontal projection. So this is all lower lobe. The aortic knuckle and descending aorta are outlined by that left lower lobe. And all of this lung, importantly behind the heart, in the retrocardiac area is portion of the left lower lobe. The diaphragm, shown here by white dotted lines, separates the lungs from the abdominal organs. The abdominal organs are more dense and appear whiter than the air-filled lungs, which appear black. Each hemidiaphragm should appear as a smooth domed contour. Note that the right hemidiaphragm is usually a little higher than the left. The liver is located immediately inferior to the right hemidiaphragm. The stomach and spleen are located immediately inferior to the left hemidiaphragm. The stomach is frequently visible as a gas-filled bubble below the left hemidiaphragm. Inferior displacement of the diaphragm is a sign of lung hyperexpansion. Raised position of a single hemidiaphragm may indicate phrenic nerve palsy. The costophrenic angles are formed by the points at which the chest wall and diaphragm meet. The costophrenic recesses contain the lower edges of the lungs which contact the diaphragm. On a frontal chest x-ray, the costophrenic angles should form acute angles which are sharp to a point. 
costophrenic blunting is often due to the presence of a pleural effusion, but it can also be related to other pleural disease or lung disease. I hope you enjoyed watching this. It was just a basic lecture. We may learn about lung pathologies in later videos. Stay tuned.